Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Thursday, February 15th, 12.28 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Happy Valentine's Day. What you're looking at is the CFS version 2 mean 2-meter temperature anomaly for the first week of March. Let's bring it back to today. You can see the northwest is well below average. And the East Coast is going to be setting records in the next few days. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, 9 degrees above average, degrees C. This goes all the way up into New England. At the same time, the Northwest is setting record cold temperatures. But if we move this progression through, it quickly disappears in the next two weeks. And record colds take over the entire country. And look at this picture anomaly in the center of the country here where the wheat crop has already been hammered. That is going to maintain through April. Record lows in this region through April according to the models. And that's a heads up. The bizarre warming hole we do, uh, talked about yesterday that defies climate change in the U.S. is caused some areas to get colder instead of hotter. So why did they call it a warming hole? Why don't they call it a, cold, a colding hole? These people, this is... Just to confuse you, this is completely insane. Researchers from Dartmouth College should all be fired, and they have identified an okay, uh, the location of the quote-unquote warming hole, which is where it's colder. So why would you name it a warming hole if it's colder? Someone please... <laughs> Can we get a little dose of reality? Snowiest winter in Havre in 138 years. Here's the reality check. More snow on the way. Heads up, Montana. To date, it's been the snowiest winter in Havre since records have been kept back in 1880. Whew. My graph almost doesn't even exist back then. That's back here in the centennial minimum. Heads up, Montana. Repeating a cycle, are we? Boom! Fun with science. Look how happy she is. I'd love that. So it was a record in Montana. Crushed. It's been a good winter for businesses. Manager Scott Stockdale noting he sold out of snowblowers, not to mention shovels. Even my toboggans are running low. Oh. February storm dumps on Teton County. Gorgeous. Look at that. Breaking records back into the 70s here. Coming out 10 hours ago. Spokane sets new snowfall record for Wednesday. What an unusual Valentine's Day present, Spokane. That's a heads up. Spokane recorded an official 7.3 inches of snow Wednesday, which blows the previous record set in 1923 of four inches out of the water. Back in 1923. Right here, solar minimum 15. It brings the season total 40.2 inches of snow, which is above average for this time of year. Heads up. Breaking records in Spokane. And that's Washington. Quickly, let's get through here. This is the third time I've done this video because we're having a blizzard, wet snow on the dish, shut down several times during the video. So quickly, reports confirm brutal January. Yes, it's in. If January seemed unusually cold, that's because it was. <laughs> As a new report verifying this. Mount Airy, North Carolina, the 31.6 degree average for January, put it at the 11th coldest since 1924. It looks like we still have good satellite. That's good. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a big announcement coming up at the end of the video. Stay with us. Extreme cold warning issued for parts of Northeast Alberta. Environment Canada has issued extreme cold warning. The warning, uh, the weather agency warned it would likely feel colder than minus 40 wind chills overnight in Wood Buffalo National Park. Whew, that is chilly. 
Mongolia, heads up. Cold wave 2018 emergency plan. Mongolia has suffered from severe winter conditions known as the Zud for the last two winters. The extreme harsh conditions continue. The running out of reserves of hay and fodder. Continuous harsh conditions have put at risk millions of livestock, which are the only source of food. Now, according to the Brigadier General and the head of NEMA, as of January 31st, 70% of the country is covered in snow. From 10 to 45 centimeters deep. And the temperatures have dropped from negative 30 to negative 46.5. This is a catastrophe happening. Prayers out to Mongolia. Extreme weather kills 34 in 13 days in Mozambique. The Institute for Disaster Management said 34 people died in the last two weeks. 17 were struck by lightning. Two were drawn. Oh, what... How does that occur? And 12 were victims of strong winds. Two were swept away by water and one was electrocuted. Seismic update, nothing of note. We'll be watching it as uh, the sea flare arrives sometime in the next few hours. At the same time the coronal hole arrives, we should have some seismic activity or volcanic activity. Speaking of which, <coughs> lava buildup from Cadavar volcano emerges from the sea. A lava buildup has been observed emerging from the sea just off of Cadavar Island in Papua New Guinea. I'll leave you links to this. That volcano is growing. A gung back in action reported on it yesterday. Bali's Mount Agung in Indonesia has resumed spewing clouds of ash just days after authorities lowered the danger level following a period of inactivity. <coughs> a spokesman said they spoke too soon. 15,000 people are looking for a place to live. Worldwide Volcanic News, Fuego and Ducono, only two volcanoes popping off today. Even in the best case scenario for climate change, extreme weather events are still going to kill everybody. <laughs> Experts say. Oh, massive event involving the sun is quickly approaching. Oh, really? I wonder what that event would do. Maybe, maybe something in the green here? I wonder what they're talking about. Grand solar minimum much? <laughs> They must be talking about the modern Eddie minimum. Whew. They're just catching on. I'll leave you links. The sun is about to undergo a major cooling period around 2050 time frame that could have an impact on temperatures here on Earth. Who, who could have figured? It's called the grand minimum, according to the scientists that just had a popping noise occur. The sun is expected to get dimmer and cooler. Whew. They must have just got the memo, according to a new study. <laughs> Let's check it out. Forecast for solar cycle 25. Real quick, let's come back here. Let me show you this. If you didn't see it, um, the new study in the Journal of Astrophysics. Man, this is a good picture. Now look at that picture of the sun. Here it is. Ultraviolet flux decreases under a grand minimum from IUE. That's the International Ultraviolet Explorer. Short wavelength observation of solar analogs. All you can get is the abstract. And what they did is they used the analog of 33 sun-like stars observed by the IUE to determine that the sun would be 7% dimmer in 2050. I'll leave you links to this paper. And that's a boom. And that's how you do science, guys. Let's come over here to a friend of ours and a friend of the channel, James Marusek. This guy's a genius and a scientist, like-minded. He has been predicting this grand minimum for a long time. Here he is with his forecast for solar cycle 25. I predict this upcoming period of minimum sunspots shall be longer and deeper than the last one. Now let's come up here. In my opinion, the most interesting part of the upcoming solar cycle, he's speaking of solar cycle 25 here, we're about to enter it, 
It looks pretty similar to 24 on the model, just a little weaker and deeper. So that's what the model looks like. Now, in his opinion, the upcoming solar cycle is the period of minimum sunspots rather than a period of maximum sunspots because the minimum represents the extreme, the primary actor that foreshadows weather events, according to James. When compared to this upcoming period of minimum sunspots with the corresponding period of minimum sunspots during the Dalton minimum, which would be cycle 5 and 6, I made the following predictive observations. The upcoming period of minimal sunspots will extend from the winter of 2016-17 to the winter of 2024-25, which would be an analogous period to the Dalton minimum time frame, which includes a major earthquake along the New Madrid fault zone, followed by massive volcanic eruptions in Indonesia and worldwide, including eight volcanoes erupting in the Cascades simultaneously. Might I add, audience? So I'll leave you links to the prediction for Solar Cycle 25 because it's not looking very good. So you better start preparing because preparing for the coming global cooling may be critical to survival. If you didn't get the memo, I just sent it to you. And these links are down below in the bottom left underneath the Oppenheimer Ranch where it says show more. So click that. You'll get all the links to all the information I just talked about. You can read this awesome article. Did you know if the temperature just falls 3 degrees centigrade, global grain production would be reduced by one quarter and the U.S. would no longer be an exporter of grain and many nations in the world would be living in famine? Can you imagine what that would do to food prices and world stability? Yeah, we can imagine. That's why we're here. If you want to buy bulk seed at wholesale prices, buy the pound. I just got hooked up with some Ford Hook and some Luculus, my two favorite heirlooms of Swiss Shard. These babies produce pounds and pounds of super nutritious greens for months. And for eight thirty two a pound, that's an acre and a half of seed. It's ridiculous. This could feed hundreds of people. So stock up. This is where you buy bulk seed starting at one pound. They've got the basics. I'll leave you links to bulk seed here, bulkseed.com. Pretty awesome. We have no connection to them, but I use them. So that's a heads up. Let's real quick talk about the solar flare that's going to arrive any moment. <clears throat> According to the prediction here, February 14th, a coronal hole solar wind stream is predicted to reach Earth by February 15th, which is now. In addition to this, a weak coronal mass ejection CME observed early on February 12th is expected to reach Earth with the same within the same time period. This combined effects would generate a G1 to G2 magnetic storm at higher latitudes, which could affect the grid and other sensitive people. Right now, the prediction is G5 from the 15th through the 17th with a waning G4. So this is going to be talked about as observing the frontier, and it's awesome. We're going to be living the science as we go into the desert. And that's a heads up. So if we quick check the solar wind, we can see that it really hasn't arrived yet, nor is it affecting us. The wind stream is still calm. The BZ and the phi angle haven't shifted much. So we're waiting on its arrival. It's not here yet. And we'll report on it tomorrow. <clears throat> Guys, it was a rough day at the ranch. My partner Leah's mother passed today. It wasn't entirely unexpected, but like all deaths, it's a struggle. Needless to say, she has to travel east to be with her family during this time. So please send her your prayers. <clears throat> and I have an extra ticket to Observing the Frontier that I want to offer the public. So anyone in the San Luis Valley or in the Santa Fe area or in Albuquerque that wants to attend the conference that can either meet me here Friday morning or Friday evening or Saturday morning in Albuquerque, email me at oppenheimerranch at gmail. 
the first person to get in contact with me that seriously wants to go, I'll make it happen. We've got a ticket for you. So let's not waste that. On a lighter note, I think that we have a new name of the radio show. It, it seems to me to be more appealing to the masses. Plus, it's got Al Gore's pathetic face sinking into the Arctic Sea here. The Inconvenient Truth. Prepping for the Grand Solar Minimum, Wednesday nights, 10 to 12 on Revolution Radio. Let me know what you think. I think this is a keeper. So don't forget if you are that person, that's that unique person that can make it here this weekend, I have a ticket for you. I even have a ride from Pagosa Springs if you can get here. Or I'll pick you up in Santa Fe. Let's do this. And that's a heads up. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Thanks for watching. It's been a rough night. The time is now to start preparing to survive and thrive in the future. Growing better together. Heads up.